Bangladeshi prisons are bursting at the seams. To relieve the pressure, the caretaker government has declared an amnesty. Tens of thousands will be freed. Outside the prisons, scores of people wait for the release of their loved ones. Rokia's son was arrested over a year ago for aggravated violence. He has just served half of his sentence, but he's up for release. Many of the prisoners are convicted criminals, but not all of them. Most of the people behind the bars, apart from the political prisoners, are the poor people. Because they can't afford to uh, come out. Because they don't know where to go. They can't pay the fees. Truckloads of inmates are being brought in and out of prisons. This is Dhaka Central Jail, the biggest prison in the country. It has the capacity to hold 3,000 people. But at the moment, there are more than 11,000 people incarcerated in this prison. And there lies the root of the problem. There are too many people inside Bangladeshi prisons. More than 80,000 people are being detained in dire conditions in facilities that can only support a quarter of that amount. Mahabub Alom is one of the magistrate lawyers working to get people out of prison under the government's amnesty. People with money can be released. They're just getting rid of the old inmates and replacing them with new ones. Up until last week, the police were on a major drive to stamp out agitators. In just a few days, 25,000 people were arrested, many of which were grassroots politicians that had threatened to take to the streets to protest against the caretaker government's heavy-handed nature. This has brought a sudden influx of inmates in the already overcrowded prisons. The authorities are just simply unable to cope with the sheer number of detainees. They believe that releasing old prisoners is the only way forward. A solution that comes as a relief for Rokia and her son, who, like many families across the country, are being reunited with their loved ones. Nicholas Hawk, Al Jazeera, Dhaka. Let's cross to our London studio now and join Asif Saleh from the human rights group Christopat or Take Notice. Thank you for joining us. Uh, Nicholas Hawk mentioned there the thousands of activists who uh, were put in jail. Give us a bit of a background as to why that happened and how they're now just being released in this way. Well, it started with uh, two years ago, when uh, in about a year and a half ago, in January 11th last year, when uh, the political impasse between the two major political parties went into such a such a bad state that uh, military basically started uh, took control, uh, not in an official way, but uh, there, there's a very a strongly military backed and controlled uh, caretaker govern government was installed in Bangladesh, and since then, since their major agenda, uh, they have said that is to root out corruption, which was very much targeted towards the political parties. And um, uh, over the last uh, 16 months, uh, they have taken the major brunt, the grassroots political, the, like uh, Nicholas Koch was saying, that uh, the brunt of the um, anti-corruption drive that has been going on. And um, over the course of the whole year, there has been about uh, 400,000 people uh, arrested in and out. And the state of emergency was declared, which gives the this uh, government a uh, sweeping power to arrest people without warrant, uh, just about based on suspicion, so and uh, the basically the. So what chances sorry, uh, there of any kind of uh, fair elections happening in the, in the near future? I think uh, that's uh, basically on one side we have a um, very unpopular uh, caretaker government right now, even though they came with strong backing, but uh, they're uh, strong on practice. And at the same time, the high inflation, which basically took the uh, price of essentials completely out of the reach of the common men, uh, went completely against them. And the, on one hand, you have this uh, unpopular government. On the other hand, you have two political parties who have been severely basically uh, hurt by the uh, anti-corruption drive against them. So it's a bit of a, a power struggle going on. And uh, the caretaker government currently is in a weaker position looking for a compromise and trying to f find a deal between the two, uh, one, of the, one of the two parties. And, uh, but I, I guess the big question right now is the election is going to happen most likely, but whether the election is going to be credible, uh, free and fair, that's, that's basically the biggest question. And do you think there's going to be any more political unrest? I mean, you mentioned some of the problems with people not being able to afford to, uh, basic necessities. Right. Yes, I, I think that, that is the major worry of the government, that right now there is no political activity allowed because of state of emergency. 
and the political parties are demanding that the, if the election happens, it has to, the state of emergency has to be withdrawn. And, uh, and there is a lot of the social unrest that is going on um, uh, because of uh, the price, uh, the high inflation. And uh, the biggest worry for the government now is that these various social unrest, this worker unrest that is developing in various parts of the country, if the political parties get reunited and somehow be able to organize the social unrest, that is going to be the major threat for the government. And, um, and, and the other worry is that their military is strongly under, under, in, in charge and they are also looking to, uh, for a long-term institutional hold in the power base through various national security councils and stuff. Okay. So there is a part of struggle going on. Okay, we have to, have to leave it there. Thank you very much indeed, Asif Saleh, for joining us with your Thank analysis. You. Still ahead on this news hour. Ante Rizabo in Peninsula Valdez, Argentina, a place where every year around a thousand whales.